I tried to sneak in on some turkeys and it's not too good. So we're putting the boat in and we're going to go hit up a spot that we found a bunch of rubs and scrapes. And hopefully they're working back through, they're freshening up their sign after all this rain. So we're putting the boat. Why are we late? Because it was raining. We just let it in there. It's like 10 o'clock right now. Is that a ground line up there? Right there? No, right Oh, no, no. Yeah, no. We're going like straight up there. Rain just quit here in Missouri. It's about noon right now, and me and Jake just got set up. This is a spot that me, that Aaron and I scouted a few days ago and found a bunch of rubs and fresh scrapes. So we thought with all this rain, it'd be a good spot to set up. And if they're working the scrape line, we'll be just on the downward side of them. If they do cut a hot track while they're crossing them, they'll just start following that trail. It's not always necessarily the biggest trail that these bucks are using just because it's not a bunch of family groups of does using one trail. It's just bucks coming along, crossing all these doe trails. An easy way to find these buck trails is just to find the scrape lines and rub lines that are going parallel to a field or some sort of food source. But we're probably just gonna sit here the rest of the day. It's November 4th and rain just quit, wind's blowing and cool temperatures, so should have the bucks up and moving around. That's what we're talking about. Want to try some? Yeah. Casey's General Store. A staple in the Midwest to keep people alive. Gave me the best part. Let us know what you bring to the woods. We prefer one of these. Anything with hard plastic containers, that's what we bring. You still got a bunch on it. Yeah, I'm saving that for later. I like to bring one of my practice broadheads sometimes. Just so I can shoot my bow once while I'm in the stand. That's why I like to shoot it, just to build your confidence up, I guess. and it kept blowing, blowing, we could tell it was getting closer and closer. When he just quit down, he's pretty dang close, probably within 100, 200 yards, so. It would make sense if somebody was accessing from the private because their wind is blowing like this and he would have been downwind of him and now he's just getting pushed back here towards the public, so. Me and Jake both thought it sounded like it could have been a buck, so hopefully he makes his way through here. He just walked through this cove. He's big. He's walking that same path that first one did. Not loud, he said. We need to set up right down there. 
to cut the trails down there instead of up here. Yeah, let's go. It's about 2.30 right now, and me and Jake watched two bucks walk this same trail right down here, cutting across this cove from the stand. And our stand is probably 50, 50, 60 yards up this ridge. First one walked through here, and we didn't make a move, and then another one walked through here, and he was a pretty good one. So we, we just decided to set up on the ground right here. I made this little ground blind just out of deadfall and stuff whatever I could find and put some grass up here and stuff hopefully by the end of the night something will come through and do the same thing I mean it's kind of a long shot but for whatever reason it seems like they're using that trail we set up on that ridge parallel to the bean fields that are up top thinking that bucks might be coming along crossing doe trails up there but it seems like they're crossing doe trails more down here at the head of this cove so Jake's about 10 yards behind me sitting in his green flannel up against him dead stump but he blends in pretty good so hopefully if something comes out of here we don't get spotted He's going to get our wind. See that, Ted? Can you see him still? Sound like it's hitting, didn't it? You hit him for sure, yeah. Be quiet, listen. Shot him good, dude. Ted, that's a that's huge bomb. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen. Oh, dude. That's exactly what we just thought was gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, that's what every single buck did. No. Great bomb. I put it right behind his shoulder. 
How far was he? 20? He was right by that tree, which is like 24, so I split the pin. I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> like, I, as it was happening, I was like... She I don't think it was real. That it just no, because, so fast. because remember, I just... I, t I keep telling myself, if I shoot another one, I'm gonna be focused. <laughs> Can you look at where you're sitting? <laughs> <laughs> I made a little fort. It worked perfect. It worked perfect. <laughs> like what all happened today was we watched two bucks come right through here. Second one came through. He was a good one. We crawled down, circled around. We decided we're gonna sit up on the ground. And so I just made this big ground blind right here. Because all this deadfall stuff. Yeah, just started stacking stuff up. And we're like, pretty sure this is the trail right here. It came out right off that edge or whatever. Nothing happened for probably two hours. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I see him in this stuff. All I see is his head move. And I'm like, that's got to be a good buck. And I just said, there's a deer right here to Jake. Because I didn't want to get too excited. And then all of a sudden he pops out and he's just huge. Drew back when he was behind this tree and all this stuff. Didn't know, had no idea we were here. No, i shot. And it made a weird sound, and I don't like it. I don't like that sound at all. I don't more recall. We'll go back and then. What should I tell him? I shot one? A huge one? I mean, I don't know what else you're gonna tell him. Hello. Just shot a pretty good one. You did? Yep. Turn it down. You think you got it? Uh. I hit him, I hit something. It was, we set up on the ground where these two first ones came through and I just made this big ground blind. And right, came, you're trying to move in on him? That yeah, and he came right down exactly how we drew it up. All right, we'll mark that last spot. Okay. You think you can find your arrow? Yeah, I should be able to. All right, just grab your arrow and get out of there. Okay. What is that? Hair. White hair. There's some bubbles in it though. Yeah, it's really bright. Makes me feel better. Jake found the arrow. It looks really good. It's got bright red blood on it and there's bubbles in it. Looks like maybe some stuff like fat on it and white hair. I don't like that white hair. If I, just because if I hit it low, if I hit it too low, then I might have missed everything, but I mean, the bubbles, I mean, that's a really good sign. We'll get out of here and watch it on the big screen, like Jake said, and hopefully come back and find a big dead buck in Missouri. Show people the turkey called him off. They don't think you have a dip in your mother will be mad at you. There you go. This is our plan. <laughs> this was our plan in case we got spotted. Just give them a couple of yelps and maybe they'll think we're a turkey. <laughs> that's why we got black face paint all over. See what Craig thinks. He's usually right, so hopefully he thinks good. Thoughts. Well, we got back to the car, and she's dead, and our phones are pretty much dead. I don't know what we're gonna do at this point. We'll figure it out. I mean, we don't know anybody from Missouri, <laughs> other than Aaron. Luckily. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. So. People from Missouri, we like you guys. Yeah. The what, dead? Pretty much everything. Hopefully the deer, too. Yeah, hopefully the deer. But the hunt is dead, and the my phone's about dead, so... We're, the what is dead? Say that again. Your phone and what? Car. Oh, the car is dead. Yeah, sorry. I was calling it the Honda is what I just call it sometimes. <laughs> Your car is dead. Yes. Do you know anybody? Like. Oh yeah, I got a I know several people. Your cousins oh, with everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle. Do do. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hopefully this is our guy. We appreciate it. Yeah. Do you want? Yeah. Got one. Uh, pretty big one. Well, Aaron just pulled in. 
Tell him that the, he doesn't know how big it is. Oh, yeah, he doesn't know how big big it is. We just keep telling him, oh, yeah, it's a pretty good one. So we'll see what he says about the footage and everything. You guys sick of waiting on me? No, we're good. No. Here's your batteries. I bought them in a gas station, so they were like 40 bucks. <laughs> so we weren't sure if he was legal until we watched the footage. <laughs> but he definitely is. This is after. Just go back to here. What is what <laughs> are you talking about? No, you do. Yeah. Shut up. You guys have been sandbagging me like this whole time. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. No way. <laughs> So at this point, are you just about to pass out? Yeah, I remember I was like, holy crap. Like, I don't really remember. Holy cow, dude. That thing's huge. It's about 11.30 right now. And we just got back out to the spot where we shot that buck. We've been looking a little bit and haven't found any blood yet. As you can see in the footage, the arrow goes through some brush and maybe some twigs or whatever before it hits the deer. So we're hoping that didn't deflect anything. But at this point, we're just trying to get a direction of travel going back to the spot where I shot him at and just trying to figure out where we think he went. pretty diluted just because when Ted shot it, it was just like a mist. If when you would shine the flashlights, you could just see moisture in the air. It never rained. There's just a lot of moisture in the air. It's kind of similar to the night we were tracking mine when it was snowing. But hopefully now that we got on first blood, it took us a while. And it seems pretty steady. It'll just open up as he goes on and starts pumping it out. He was running real fast, so you'd think his blood should be flowing out. But we got a direction of travel now, so you feel like you want to throw up? I did. Now I, I feel a little do. bit better. I mean, I feel yeah. a little better. <sighs> right there, right there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Blood right here. Oh, blood right here. the fence. <sighs> There's the other post right there. For what? The line. Oh, the, it's the going property right, lines right there. Right through here. You can see blood up there on that lane. He's bleeding good the whole way. We can't go over there, so keep walking down the property line. Maybe he'll come back over onto this side. Yeah. I think that's him, Ted. You glass him. I can just, that looks like an eye. What? I think it's him. Come over here once again. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Is he dead for sure? He's laying on the side. <laughs> what? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see him more? <laughs> Our spotlight is dying. Oh my gosh, I can see him. <laughs> what is that thing? Oh my gosh. Tell him what we're going to do then. Well, we got to try to get a hold of it, guys. So, I already looked on Onyx because we knew there was potential he was going to end up on private. He was heading that direction. We were just hoping he didn't make it that far, and he barely did. I mean, 20, 20 yards or something. And it's not like you made a bad shot. I mean, yeah. I've never really seen a blood trail quite like that. It was just spraying up both sides the whole time. So, I mean, everything's legit as far as what we did. So uh, you'd think the person would let us go get the deer that's 30 yards over the line, but I guess we got to yeah, find out how to get a hold of them. What time is it? It's 1.45, so I don't know how we're going to do that tonight. Like, yeah, 
probably not going to be on his good side if you call him or no. knock on his door at 145. Good news is it's cold. So, like, as far as the deer spoiling, deer spoiling I'm not worried yeah. about that. I mean, ideally, we would just be able to grab the thing and take care of him, but legally, we got to square up with the guy. <sighs> but he's dead. <laughs> oh, he's dead. <laughs> You little sad. <laughs> in Missouri, the law is that you you have to have landowner permission to go recover the deer. So we sh we're kind of researching, trying to figure out who he, who the guy was, and we got his number and sent him a text message just because it's 2:30 in the morning and we didn't want to call him up. Hopefully, he gets back to us here pretty soon and we can go recover him. But we might just slip out of here and go back to the house for couple hours and hopefully either he responds or we get a hold of him in the morning and we can get permission to go get him. Maybe hang some jackets and stuff in the trees here just because I mean coyotes are the only concern at this point. Try to leave some human scent in the woods and yeah it's plenty cold. Yeah I mean I'm not worried I would be more worried about leaving him if he had shot him in the guts or something like it was that that was sitting in him but it's just blood. I mean it's not ideal but I mean, we're, we're still going to eat the thing for sure. I know I know the deer will be fine, so I'm not worried about that. Just coyotes are the only concern at this point, and that he could potentially say no, but I just can't imagine someone saying that. Never know. Well, we're going to find out. <sighs> Makes me nervous. Is that your coyote deterrent? Oh. I can I can send you my location if you've got a cell number. I can just I can send you a, a GPS pin on via Google Maps. Okay, if you want to do that, then that'll be fine. Just on this same phone number, same phone number. I sure appreciate you letting us go over there and get him. No, okay, dokie. All right, son. Well, I appreciate you calling to check. Thank you. All right. Take care. We can go get the deer. Yes, let's go get him. What are we doing? Oh man, you talk about stressful for the last few hours. Let's go grab this thing. Let's go get him. What are we doing? I can see his rack sticking up over there, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> what the hell? Oh. Holy cow, Ted. It's just, we were talking about it last night, like if we were gonna find this thing, how crazy it is that this thing's lived, I don't know, five, six, seven rifle seasons here. And like yeah, the, that's the, stuff the thing that, that we were talking about, is rifle season. The stuff that this deer's seen and then to come by us last night at 20 yards on the ground in a little makeshift yeah. blind and head just <laughs> sitting on the ground. <laughs> Starting to make that blind like, I mean, I was totally confident in it, Yeah, but when I now that I look at it, it's like holy crap, that's really open. <laughs> like, but that's why I kept telling more. Wait till you see where we were set up. Yeah. Get, oh him tagged up. Get him tagged up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Ted. Oh <laughs> Let's drag you down to the boat, boys. We don't usually get too riled up about big deer, but in this particular area, I've grown up hunting around here, and uh, you don't see a buck like this very often at all. Mm -hmm. This area, as you all can tell, I mean, we got a guy's tree stand right yeah. here, 75 yards away. And just the way the buck was acting, right when he popped into that opening, you could tell he was like looking around skittish. Yeah. You don't see Nervous. mature bucks like that very often, but every time you do, it's just like they're on the they're tippy yeah. toes. It's right. pretty pretty cool to see. I haven't seen a bunch of them, but every time they're pretty yeah, much acting like he was acting. 
unless they're hot on a doe or something. In this place, he's he's been shot at. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if you find a broadhead or something in him. Like for sure, rifle bullets it, have been. It gets mm -hmm. hunted hard, and you can tell like these woods are not that thick. Mm -hmm. Like for rifle hunters to come in here and cover it is no deal. Mm -mm. Ted Where and I ran into a guy right over there the other day, two days ago, I think, when we were in here. Yep. There's a guy when we came in yesterday to set up that both access by boat, that guy was in a pop-up line because it was raining. Yeah, but, and you're talking 200 yards that way, 300 yards that way, yep. another guy stand right here. He walked 20 yards from. Yeah, he walked right in kill range from that stand. But the biggest thing with this hunt, well, I guess let's take a step back first because the first day we came down here to Missouri, if you go back and watch the first video, Ted and I are tootling around in that boat and we're scouting a bunch of these areas. And me and Ted hit this, this spot was the last spot that we hit, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was. We found all these big rubs in here, these big scrapes in this spot, and it was getting ready to storm, so we just speed scouted it real quick. We just cruised up here, checked the ridge, kind of eased down towards this bottom, and saw the sign, marked it on the map, and got out of here. And then basically have been trying to come back and hunt it for the last couple of days, and there's been people yeah. mm -hmm. in here. Yeah, the other day Ted and I were trying to get to this spot and there was a guy just a hundred yards from here and we, so we kind of went around him to the other side of the bedding area and that's when we had that small buck come in with and those the turkeys, turkeys and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I mean, like you said, there's been just boats parked here every other time we've tried to get in here, but they were yeah. never in that this specific corner and this is where most of the sign is, right on this ridge. Right. The thing is, that day when we were scouting, we didn't scout just this area. Like, we scouted probably five, six spots. Yeah, just bounced around all over. Right. But... That's like biggest thing that I've learned is on these out of state trips, like Aaron comes in with a plan. He has spots picked out and he goes to them, checks them and scouts them. And you cross but, the ones out yeah, that don't have hot sign. He's not just coming here like whatever, <laughs> you know, he already is planning ahead, way, way ahead. Yeah. And, and so we just, we're looking at the map and going, like you said, A to B and, yeah. and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And a lot of the spots we checked didn't have sign. Mm -hmm. Didn't have much no. for deer sign. Not to say that there's not deer there because deer sign isn't the end all be all thing, mm -hmm. what you're looking for. But on a short trip like this, short window, deer we were looking for- Deer sign doesn't lie. Like right. if it's there, the deer are there. And it wasn't just deer, big sign in here. It was big, super fresh sign. I yeah. remember filming you at that interview up the hill where you knelt down next to that rub and that thing had been made in the last day or two. Yep. You know, and we, we counted several other rubs down through the ridge, so we knew there was multiple bucks in here that we would likely shoot, you know, because we weren't going to be too picky. You know, no. A legal <laughs> two-year-old buck or better down here yeah. is a darn good one on public land. Making that move, though, that you guys made, mm -hmm. that was pretty savvy mm -hmm. on your part, you know, and yeah. that's kind of the same thing that Brian did a few days ago, and that's what you got to do in the rut. Like, you can't waste time. If you see a buck cruising like that, you got to get out. Mm -hmm. But where were you guys set up? Probably 100 yards up there? I mean, right yeah. behind the cameras where you shot him. Yeah, yep. and right downwind of where we were set up is where he came out, just like the other mm -hmm. two deer that we saw. And we knew that like it, it just wasn't going to work. And obviously, for some reason, the bucks were traveling this trail. If a doe walked down it or if they were just all cutting doe trails like we talked about in the interview, who knows? But for whatever reason, they were all walking there, and that's where we had to be. And, I mean, it wasn't going to work any other way. No especially this time of year you just got to be willing to be mobile i mean w whether it's moving your stand if you're one guy it'd be a lot easier to just take your stand down and move it over here or like with us we have to hang two stands and it was we had what two three hours so we didn't want to yeah. hang them both again when something was potentially going to come through and cru cruising through at any second you made a yeah, little yeah i mean there. i was nervous making that thing i was kept looking over yeah. here and I like that though. Just you because... took just a bunch of like dead falls. Just, I mean, you can see all the dead brush down through here. He just took some logs and kind of created a little teepee in there. <laughs> and he was just sitting in there underneath of it. Windy and wet conditions, yeah. perfect for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's the thing, man. When you see him do something in the rut, like the, and these trails are not easy to see. They're very right, faint yeah. buck trails that are crossing doe trails. Mm -hmm. When you see him do that, when you see one buck do that, you got to move right then. Don't waste time because a lot of people will put a set stand up and they think they got to hunt that stand and they'll see bucks all rut cruising out of range. Waiting for something to happen or making something happen yep. in this situation. And I mean, that's what we did and it feels pretty good. I mean, yeah. like we said, regardless of however big this thing is, like 
had the plan worked on a two-year-old buck, it would have felt good to know that we got down out of the stand yeah. and had a had a buck come by and our plan worked. I thought the plan did work on a two-year-old buck. <laughs> I drove all the way back last night and these knuckleheads never told me what the heck they shot. And, I, and Ted was just like, yeah, pretty, you know, he's a legal buck. Nice buck, <laughs> look like. And I was like, okay, well, I know Ted's not real picky. Like, he's probably going to shoot a nice two-year-old. And I was pretty excited. Like, I was just kind of tootling back, no, no stress. You told me the shot sounded good, looked good. So I was like, yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> and I walked nice in, and they, they start playing this video for me. And I'm like, what the heck did you do? <laughs> that thing is huge. You got to think you guys for everything because i mean i wouldn't be in missouri right now <laughs> i wasn't here yeah. all right it's gonna be real awkward <laughs> you come here come here <laughs> there's ted's buck there you go we showed you guys a shot a while ago but like it hits right in front of the shoulder comes out on the other side right in front of the opposite shoulder and that's a few inches off from where you were aiming yeah. but i'm wondering if it didn't hit some of that brush going through there and deflect a little bit that's a situation where you're happy you're shooting a fixed blade because yeah hitting some debris in front of a deer with a mechanical who knows if that thing's doing somersaults or what it's doing mm -hmm. by the time it hits it and then hitting bone hard bone like that yeah yeah i mean hitting dead center height just yeah, right that... in front you know but that's that's the thing man when you're taking shots that are closer like that, they're just higher odds. Mm -hmm. You've got more room for error. Yeah. You know, when they're out there at 30 yards plus, that deer can react and do all kinds of crazy stuff. This thing was like 22, 23 yards. The arrow hit him before he was able to right. drop more than Before an inch. the deer was able to move, the arrow hit him, which is perfect, you know? I mean, I mean the deer didn't, I mean, he died. Like, he ran till he died. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he was done in a matter of seconds, I'm sure. Boat back, buddy. Oh, yeah. That's it. He's gonna look good on the front of it. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> back here in my dad's kitchen today trying to get Ted's hunt finished up here on the editor so we can post it tonight. Got the sweet fish tank over my shoulder over here. And uh, we just got a text and had some pretty sweet developments with Ted's buck. Yeah, so uh, after we shot it and posted some pictures or whatever, and I think Aaron sent a picture of the buck to the landowner. The landowner's grandson, Dylan, had a bunch of trail camera pictures of that buck. And, and when we walked up there that night to the property line and shined where the blood was, we could see a trail camera over yeah. on the private side. And turns out it's the same trail camera that he ran in front of that Dylan's mm -hmm. been getting pictures of this buck on. So it's pretty sweet. Yeah, he was he super was nice about it and everything. And said congratulations pretty much. and Sent us the pictures and was allowing us to show them to you guys here on this video. So pretty sweet deal mm -hmm. all together. Yeah. We're trying to get this video out for you guys as soon as we can right now. I'm hoping to have it done here in the next few hours. But before we leave you guys on this video, I want to remind everybody we got a bunch of sweet discounts on all the gear that we use. Just expand the YouTube description down there below and you'll get them all. Right now, Legendary also has a real good promotion where you can save 50% off of all of our THP gear, our deer tour shirts, and our apparel. You can save 50% off at legendarywhitetails.com if you buy some hunt guard piece of clothing. If you buy a piece of hunt guard, you can use the code HG2018, save 50% off of THP gear. You got a hunt guard hoodie on right now. Yep. Yep, right there, right HG. There. And I'll put information down in the description below for that. Also, Legendary has their Hunt on Us campaign going for a little bit longer here, I believe. So if you bought a deer hunting license this fall, <laughs> just take a picture of it, go to huntonus.com and send it to Legendary and they're gonna give you $25 yep, back yeah. in Legendary gift card. So give you some uh, extra Christmas money. As you guys saw in Ted's hunt, we had to gain landowner permission to go get the buck and 
Some states you have to do that. Some states you're allowed to leave the weapon on your side of the fence and then pursue if you, as long as you've got blood. I mean, you just need to check your local regulations whenever you got hit deer crossing mm -hmm. property lines. And we're really glad that we had on X when we were out there at 2 a.m. because we could figure out who owned the property and eventually find the phone number for yeah. the guy. And we waited until, what, 6.30, 7 in the morning probably? Yeah, 7 in the morning. To call him, called him up and got a hold of him immediately and he was super nice and really appreciated us, you know, asking for permission because Dylan said they've had issues in years past with lots of people trespassing on their land and stuff. And most of these landowners are like that, guys. That's what we find all over the place. You know, if you just ask and explain the situation, they're usually fine with it. So use that tool. It's very valuable. We've also got a discount for the Onyx Hunt app that we use on our phones. You can find it down in the description below as well. And yeah, appreciate you guys joining us on this video. We got some sweet hunts coming up real soon. Zach's hunt for his buck up in Iowa is going to take up the channel for the rest of the week because it's some pretty amazing footage. You're not going to want to miss it. And if you want to continue to follow us here at The Hunting Public, go to Instagram, Facebook, follow us there. And please be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube to uh, stay up with all of our hunts and adventures. You all we got savage. to say about that. <laughs>